William and Caroline Herschel, working here in Bath, musicians and astronomers, moved their telescopes across the night sky, reading it line by line like a musical score. Working together, they discovered thousands of previously unknown stars, comets, and other celestial objects. It's not that they just became great musicians and then later on became great astronomers. They speak in their correspondence of the time of, of using their ability to recognize abstract patterns in music in order to see patterns in the stars. Now, I think we could celebrate this kind of knowledge transfer, of skill transfer more. We're very into specialization, especially in the STEM subjects. We are very into the STEM subjects, aren't we? <laughs> we hear a lot about how STEM is the future of jobs. Right? And of course, there are a lot of very cool things you can do, like science-y, engineer-y things, studying STEM. But could we make these fields more open, more welcoming to all sorts of people if we started to teach them in a more creative, more hands-on, more playful way? If we let each student first answer the question, what can I make with this? Let me explain what's going on here when I'm playing. The notes that I play, each note creates a, a piece of data that gets sent to my computer, which is running some software that I wrote. That contains an algorithm that interprets the notes and creates a live visual stream. So what you're seeing here isn't playing back. It's being created in real time as you watch by the meeting of the, the piece with the performance through the algorithm. Uh, each piece has a different algorithm that creates different visuals that are especially suited for that piece. Uh, so this, this algorithm can tell the difference between my left hand and my, my right hand, and it draws the constellation between the last few notes that I play. Um, now, I've said this word a few times, algorithm. It's kind of a scary word, isn't it, algorithm? Not just because it reminds you of studying for an exam, but algorithms these days have a lot of power, don't they? Algorithms are involved in automatic stock trading. Some of you might remember the flash crash when the value of the stock market suddenly dropped by over a trillion dollars. That was some algorithms going, oops. <laughs> uh, algorithms also buy ads on social media platforms, micro-targeting very specific groups of people, giving them just the information to turn them on or off to a specific political idea or candidate with no real oversight over whether what they're saying is true. So yeah, algorithms are scary, uh, and we need to remember how powerful they are. But with that power comes the ability to create beauty, to be part of artistic creation. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm going to play another piece for you, going with another algorithm. This is called The Sea Was Never Blue.
on, but I, I, unfortunately there's not very much time, and it's a long piece. So, uh, before I wrap things up, I would like to invite you all to take action in two ways. Number one, try to let go of the idea of STEM being about jobs. STEM subjects are outlets for creative expression. Jobs are separate. Do this especially when you talk to kids about STEM, okay? Uh, number two, when you notice algorithms in your day-to-day -day life, think of the person behind the algorithm. That algorithm is collecting data, it's making decisions, it's influencing things. Someone wrote that, someone creative, someone with flaws, someone trying to accomplish something. Algorithms are not neutral. They are creative acts. This last piece is called How to Actually Change Your Mind. 